News about COVID-19, aka the novel coronavirus, is practically unavoidable these days. While it's incredibly important to remain informed about the emerging international pandemic, it also can't be denied that many less than reputable outlets have resorted to fear-mongering about the virus in order to sell papers and online ads. We want to cut through the spin and give you the plain and simple facts about the disease and your chances of contracting it based on national infection and mortality rates as of March 21, 2020. It's worth noting that information about this disease is developing rapidly and often changes day by day. So for best results, we recommend staying informed through reliable primary sources, like the Center for Disease Control and the World Health Organization. At the time of this writing, the total number of global infections, including those who have recovered or died, is at 277,292. We'll go continent by continent to give you the full breakdown of the virus's presence in each country. And remember, to reduce contracting COVID-19, you're advised to stay indoors and maintain social distancing, and also both wash your hands and avoid touching your face. Regardless of the country you're in, these basic procedures make a huge difference in reducing your chances of getting infected and spreading the COVID-19 virus. Now let's take a look at the state of the world under COVID-19. First up, Asia. China, despite being the original epicenter for the virus, has actually experienced a considerable dip in infections as a result of strong government containment measures. Thus far, China has experienced a total of 81,008 confirmed cases, including 3,255 deaths. However, most of the cases are historical at this point. As of writing, China only has 6,013 active cases, and new cases have fallen to fewer than 50 per day. Your risk of getting COVID-19 in China is now relatively low. Japan has also been doing an excellent job of containing the spread of the virus despite its large population and comparatively small surface area. There have been 1,007 cases, only 757 of which are active, and only 35 sufferers have died. Risks are lower here than for most countries in Europe and the Americas. The same goes for Pakistan, with only 505 active cases, India with only 247 active cases, Indonesia with only 393 active cases, Thailand with only 368 active cases, Taiwan with only 123 active cases, and Vietnam with a truly remarkable 75 active cases. Risk of infection is slightly greater in some parts of the Middle East. Iran has a total of 19,644 infections and 1,433 deaths, though the overall recovery numbers are still positive at 6,745. Israel has a lower risk level, on par with many of the East Asian countries, with an active infection number of 689. Turkey is even lower at 661 active cases. Iraq has an impressively low 142 active cases, and Afghanistan has only 23. South Korea experienced an initial boom of infections, but thanks to rapid testing and containment, the growth of the infection has slowed. They have an overall number of 8,799 cases, though only 6,085 of those cases are still active. Russia has reported a relatively low number of infections too, with a total of 253 cases, 12 of which have recovered. Overall, trends in Asia appear to be positive, with strong testing and containment procedures that make your risks of getting COVID-19 lower than in Europe or North America. And this brings us to Europe, where COVID-19 infections have accelerated quickly for a variety of reasons, but apparently mostly due to lax containment procedures. Italy has been hit the hardest, with the second largest number of infected of any country in the world, at 47,021 recorded infections and 4,032 deaths. Western Europe in general appears to have a quite high risk of infection. France has reported over 12,000 cases and 450 deaths. Germany has almost 20,000 confirmed cases with lower death rates and only 68 fatalities. Spain has also been hit particularly hard with 21,571 confirmed cases and 1,093 deaths. Risk of infection in Western Europe is currently quite high. Can the same be said for Northern Europe? Denmark has 1,255 confirmed cases and only 9 deaths. Sweden is slightly worse with over 1,600 cases and 16 deaths. Iceland is doing well on the whole with only 409 cases. Finland is slightly higher with 503 and Norway is the highest of Northern Europe with just under 2,000 cases. Overall, Northern Europe is faring significantly better than Western Europe in terms of infection risk. Eastern Europe has similarly lower infection rates than Western Europe. Poland reports 439 infections and 5 deaths, 
Latvia has only 124 infections and no deaths, Greece has just lower than 500 confirmed cases, Romania has 277 active cases, once again with no deaths. Hungary has a mere 103 cases with 4 deaths and 7 recoveries, Belarus has only 69 cases, none of which have resulted in fatalities, and Bulgaria has only 142 cases, 3 of which have died and 3 that recovered. It's safe to say that on the whole, infection risk is lower in Eastern Europe, especially when compared to the West. Speaking of the West, the UK has reported 3,983 cases of COVID-19 out of 66,976 tested individuals, 177 of which have died. It's clear that Europe overall is a mixed bag, with the UK, Northern Europe and Eastern Europe on the lower end of infection risk and Western Europe on the far higher end. This brings us to Africa. On the whole, African countries' efforts to contain the spread of COVID-19 have been incredibly successful. Algeria has only reported 94 cases with 11 deaths and 32 recoveries. The Democratic Republic of Congo has only reported 3 cases. Sudan, only 2 cases, Chad, only 1, Nigeria, only 12, Ghana, only 19, Angola, only 2, and South Africa is one of the most infected countries on the continent. And even then, the total infected number is only 240 with no reported deaths. Africa has one of the lowest risks of COVID-19 infection on any continent on Earth. Cases are higher in Australasia, with Australia reporting 1,068 cases and 7 deaths, though New Zealand drags down the average with only 52 cases and no reported deaths. So it goes without saying that risk of infection is much higher in Australia than in New Zealand. This brings us to the Americas. In South America, Brazil has 977 cases, 11 deaths, and 2 recoveries. Argentina's numbers are considerably lower and only 158 confirmed cases. Chile has only 434 confirmed cases, 6 recoveries, and no deaths. Peru is even lower at 263 active cases with only 4 deaths and 1 recovery. Colombia is lower still with only 158 cases and no deaths. Venezuela reports only 65 infections with 1 recovery and thus far no deaths. South America, it appears so far, has a relatively low risk of COVID-19 infection. North America, sadly, is another story. While the United States of America is so large that you'd have to do a state-by-state -state breakdown to get the full picture, it's clear that overall infection rates are accelerating. The total number of cases are reported just below 20,000, though the number swells by several hundred every day, and deaths currently outnumber recoveries. The number of infections in the U.S. is expected to undergo rapid growth over the following weeks and months putting U.S. citizens at relatively high risks of infection, especially if they don't follow containment procedures. Canada is at a significantly lower risk. They have only 1,087 confirmed cases with 12 deaths and 14 recoveries. Mexico is even lower at 203 cases, only 2 deaths and 4 recoveries. Jamaica and Haiti also boast low infection rates at 21 cases of infections between them. Of all the countries in North America, the United States has by far the highest risk of infection. The moral of the story is to keep those numbers low as possible by maintaining social distancing and maintaining good hygiene. It's worth noting once again that all of these statistics were recorded on the morning of the 21st of March 2020 and are subject to change as the situation develops. Statistics like these also never tell the full story. Many cases often go unreported due to unavailability of testing for locational or economic reasons, and this means the true number of infections and therefore the risk of infection are often higher than what's reported. This shouldn't be cause for panic. Instead, take it as a reminder to remain cautious, not spread misinformation, stay informed, and follow anti-infection protocols. Thanks for watching this episode of the Infographics Show. Want more interesting information on diseases to give you some perspective on our current times? Why not check out Diseases That Will Kill You The Quickest and What If Ebola Infected The Whole World? Stay safe and stay indoors!